these lungs are anything but normal. They're all examples of life-threatening lung conditions. For many patients with lung disease, transplant isn't possible. However, for women with the rare lung disease lymphangioleomyomatosis, also known as LAM, it is the end-stage option. These specimens are housed in Auckland's Faculty of Medicine's Learning Centre, a purpose-built resource for medical and other health science students. Such an accessible teaching facility wasn't available when Dr Tanya McWilliams did her training. She's a specialist respiratory physician and a member of Auckland's lung transplantation team. If we look at the international figures, actually less than 1% of lung transplants are done around the world for lamb. In New Zealand we've done almost 200 transplants and we've done two transplants for lamb and I've personally been involved in one of them. When you look at the international data, lamb patients do have the best survival rates of almost any of the transplant pa lung transplant patients and I think this is because on the whole they're a group of women who are otherwise in excellent health, who have single organ disease and do well post-transplant and in New Zealand we're very proud of our one lamb patient who's still alive who's just passed her 10 year anniversary after transplant and I believe is making the most of her lung transplant. Auckland City Hospital houses the only heart and lung transplantation unit in the country, but it's to Hearty Towers, the heart and lung transplant service at Green Lane, where patients go for assessment, recovery and review. Hi, Helen speaking. Coordinator Hi, Helen Gibbs you? is the first contact oh, for patients after referral. I like to develop a rapport, make them feel at ease, because obviously this is um, pretty scary for them. Coming up here, they uh, they, while they may be frightened, they also come up here with high hopes that there can be some treatment option uh, to improve their failing health. So did you get my letter about the new tacrolimus? The process of accepting uh -huh. donor lungs starts with a call from right. so Organ Donation New Zealand. So we have to ensure that we've got recipients of the same blood group. The lungs are going to fit into that recipient, so there has to be a size issue that comes into it. If we've decided, yes, we do want to take those organs, and yes, we have got suitable recipients, so the process begins. And if we've got two or more recipients of the same blood group and same size that could benefit from those lungs, we then look at who is the sickest patient. So who might not survive to receive a transplant? And that could be the person who's been waiting the least amount of time, um, who's going to receive those organs ahead of somebody who's been waiting for you know six months or nine months. Once a match is made, time is critical. There can be logistical problems for us. Weather can play a big part because obviously everybody's got to come up to Auckland Hospital and also getting our donor team, our retrieval team, to go and retrieve these organs. Lung transplantation began in New Zealand in 1993. 2013 was a record year with 19 lung transplants. The donor referrals to organ donation I think were pretty static as they have been over the last few years but what has changed is that we were able to utilise the organs that we've been offered and to be able to do that you need to have people on your waiting list. So if you've only got four or five people on your waiting list it's pretty obvious that you are not going to do many transplants because you haven't got the people to transplant as where if you have greater than 10 or 12 people on your waiting list, it's highly likely that you may have uh, all of the blood groups covered and you will be able to, to use those organs uh, that have been offered. So in terms of women with LAM, I've dealt with three patients. Uh, two of those patients have been successfully transplanted uh, and one woman we are uh, continuing to follow um, in our clinic presently. Lisa Wyeth from Invercargill had her lamb lungs replaced in 2004. She was on the inactive transplant list for seven years before going on the active waiting list. Five months I was on it before I got a, a call. I had to do it because otherwise I would have been dead. There's, there's no, there was no choice for me, it was, it was, that was the only option. And that's why you, you, you stay with the lungs that you've got as, as long as you can. There's a, there's a window of opportunity that uh, opens and I was told when it opened and when it was pretty much going to close, um, so I knew I had to do it. I really got mine in the nick of time, so I, yeah, I was very lucky. Ten years on, Lisa is going strong. However, Dr McWilliams says post-transplant lamb patients can have problems that are specific to them. 
and those problems are chylus pleural effusions, which can require specific management with chest strains to drain them and sometimes dietary management, sometimes even needing total parental nutrition for a period of time. Patients with LAM could still potentially have problems like a haemorrhage into an AML after transplant and their GP needs to be aware of that and of course we need to monitor their kidney function carefully because the drugs they take for immunosuppression after transplant do put a strain on their kidneys and we need to bear in mind that they may not have normal kidneys. All GPs who look after post-transplant patients are advised to give their patients annual influenza vaccinations and also to give them pneumococcal vaccinations. And it's also important that they're careful with infection after transplant, so avoiding family or friends who have infection. Patients who have transplants are also increased risk of cancer after transplant and, and particularly for women who have LAM, obviously need to have regular cervical screening and regular mammography after transplant. In New Zealand, the average time on the active transplant waiting list is around six months.